37-year-old Sakura uh, Kukumi is chasing a shot of glory in a new event with almost no money to do it. Jane Wells has the story for us. It's part of our partnership with Acorns. Invest in you. Ready, set, grow. To me, the karate was more of an escape. It was just something peaceful about it. I just hear my gi and I just hear myself breathing and I don't hear anything else. <laughs> my name is Sakura Kokumai. Hawaii-born Sakura Kokumai is one of thousands of Americans giving up everything to invest in gold, Olympic gold. Two types of karate are debuting in Tokyo at the Summer Games, kumite, which is sparring, and kata, a series of technical movements. Kokumai does kata. So I always explain it as like figure skating without music. She is fourth in the world in women's kata, number one in the U.S., America's best hope for a medal in karate. Juggling work and karate was impossible. I was sleeping while I was stretching, like... Um, I wasn't eating right, my mind wasn't in the right place, so I decided to quit my job, and I didn't know what to do. She moved to California to train, living for free with a family friend. She has no car and no coach. Are we looking at your wardrobe? Yes. <laughs> yes. She won gold at the Pan American Games last summer, coaching herself. Quite a menacing look on her face. She will need that confidence. There is no guarantee Sakura Kokumai will qualify for the games, let alone medal, and this could be her one shot. Karate will not be in the 2024 Olympics in Paris. My focus right now is to qualify, and then my thought was, okay, once I get there, then I'll figure it out. Uh, Kokumai is getting some support from Panasonic, Team USA, and the USA Karate Federation. Not enough to get a coach, but she does get her travel expenses reimbursed when she goes to these mandatory qualifying tournaments. And she did win silver just last week in Dubai. Guys, you can see more of her in action, including trying to teach me a couple of moves at mm -hmm. CNBC.com. And I have a link uh, on Twitter at Jane Wells. So she's, she's not even five feet tall, but man, she gets in the dojo and she just is a giant. It's fabulous to watch Jane real, real quick. Why, why are they not having it in 2024? They just decided not to. They're not going to have it in Paris. And God forbid, because of this coronavirus, the Olympics maybe get canceled this year in Tokyo. There right. would be no karate maybe ever. Wow. Crazy. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Jane. Which brings us all mm -hmm. to someone who knows a little bit to, uh, uh, about being a pro athlete and figuring out your finances at the same time. Lauren Williams is one of five Olympic athletes in history and the only American woman to win medals in both the Summer Games and the Winter Games, a relay gold medalist at the 2012 London Summer Games, and then she returned to win a silver in the two-woman bobsled at the 2014 Sochi Games. Now, one hurdle Lauren struggled to jump early in her career was organizing her finances, but now through her own financial wellness organization called Worth Winning, she is working with other young professionals, including athletes, to get on the right track. She's also part of our CNBC Financial Advisors Council. Lauren, welcome. Good to, good to have you with us. I don't really know where to start, uh, <laughs> but where did your interest in finance actually start? Was it born of necessity when you came into money as a pro athlete or what? It was always in me from early on. So math and money was a thing that I was very interested in. So I chose finance as a major, but I didn't know exactly what I was going to do with it. And the real seed was planted when I started as a professional athlete and had two financial advisors that weren't really answering the questions that I had. And I was trying to figure out where's the gap between what I'm wanting and what they're providing to me, and how can I close that gap for people in the next generation? Are you being too polite? Were they, were they, <laughs> did they not just did not, didn't answer your questions, or did they get you into stuff that wasn't really suited to you? Well, I am not one of those athletes that has a story of going broke or being scammed or those sorts of things. Do. Yeah, very, very many do. But it was one of those things where I just was not getting answers. So, you know, can I move out from living with my college roommate where I was paying, you know, a little bit of rent to, you know, do I get a house or do I get a, a better apartment? What, what can I afford as an athlete that's now earning six figures? Can I get a new car? Basic financial questions were the things I was looking for answers to. And they were just saying, invest, invest, invest. Mm -hmm. 
you know, the athlete we just watch is emblematic of, of the financial reality for a lot of these Olympians. You think they have this big, glamorous life. You're at the Olympics, you know, and, and in reality, they are struggling to make ends meet. She doesn't have a car. She barely has a roof over her head. What can be done to better financially support these athletes? Because they do not have a lot of money coming in. Yeah, we need to support Team USA and really get behind not just watching the games, but also figuring out how to get behind athletes like Sakura. And I, I think she would say she's not making a sacrifice, but she's making a choice. She's she's not doing that 401k right now in that job because this is so important. And so she's so passionate about it that it's worth giving up the finances right now because money is not the end goal. It's this thing that she's in pursuit of and the journey. And so really getting behind that is a really important part of this process. I often think about, you know, the people we don't see with the medals. You know, you've had that success, but a lot of people are trying and trying for it. They make the sacrifices. They might not even get it. So how, what are you doing now to kind of reach people and say, look, this is, these are going to be the answers that I was looking for, you know, back when it was my turn. And now here's how I'm going to help you. Yeah, so it's kind of a two-pronged approach for me. I'm running a company now where I'm helping athletes and other young professionals organize their finances, but I'm really excited that to be working with the United States Olympic Committee to be helping these athletes. So there's a program called the ACE program where there are grants available, they're need-based. Uh, we're also now working on a financial literacy program. So we're wanting to be able to provide information to the masses and make sure that these athletes have what they need to be able to pursue their, their dreams. You're a track and field runner, uh, a sprinter, relay uh, person. What was it like the first time you got in a bobsled? It was scary. I kind of say it was like being kicked off a cliff in a washing machine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't want that happening to me. You get used to it, though. I kept getting back in the washing machine. So. Yeah, and enough to win a medal.